Come on in. Come on in, good people. Good evening, hey, Cal Cal. Come on in. Good evening to you. It's kind of sometimes weird. Let's see. Come on in, good people. Hmm. Good evening. Good evening. How you doing? God bless you. Hey, Brittany, come on in. How you doing, Britt? Hi, Pam. God bless you guys. Do me a favor as you come in, just say hello. Good evening. Kind of being weird. Okay, let's see if I can get it to move a little faster. How you doing? The Facebook user thing is weird. If you have, if you're still saying Facebook user, you just need to give permission for StreamYard to show your name, and it will just go ahead and show your name. How you guys doing this evening? Hope you're doing great. Hope you're doing well. Um, hope you guys are doing great. I uh, want to talk to y'all tonight a little bit. Let me see if I can set this thing down. I'm having an issue for a second. Um, but hope everything is going well, you guys. Hope you're doing great this evening. Hope that you're having a great Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to speak to you guys tonight, and we're going to talk about um, the cost of maturity tonight. We're going to talk about that. So I hope you guys are doing great, though. I hope you guys are having a great Tuesday. I hope you guys are having a great summer. I hope your summer is going well. I hope things are going great. I know it's been hot. I mean, it's been a heat wave. It was like everywhere, but it's been for sure hot here. So <laughs> I hope you guys are still keeping cool um, and uh, really praying for y'all out there. They don't have a good AC. All right. So uh, we're going to pray and then we're going to go ahead and get started. If you would do me a favor, hit that share button. Let somebody know that we're on uh, this evening. Hey, you doing, Steph? Um, hey, Kimberly, God bless you. Uh, so do me a favor and just hit that share button while we're waiting for people to come in. And we're going to get started. So I really believe God has a word. You know, God always has a word, honestly, for us. Um, but this is a season that we need to begin to pay close attention to what God is saying. Okay, I'm going to pay close attention uh, to what God is saying. God is stretching the body of Christ um, in this hour. And he's stretching us because we're on the precipice of change. Somebody said we're on the precipice of change. We're on the precipice of change. Um, some people have already fallen into it. Uh, some people are getting ready to go into it. Some of you probably get a signal that you have through transition. Um, but either way, we're on the precipice of one of the greatest changes that we've seen in history um, of the church. And I know there's a lot, again, I know there's a lot of uproar and turmoil and all kinds of things is going on in the earth. But that is always a signal that God is shaking up things to get ready for the next move of God. He's readying the ground. You, When you get ready to, to ready the ground for seed, you got to till it up. 
to break up the ground. And so God is breaking up a lot of hearts, minds, and spirits this hour and ready to receive the implantation of the Holy Spirit in the earth where it needs to come. So I'm excited about it, okay? So we're gonna pray tonight. We're gonna talk to you about maturity. Um, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about why I think it's important for us to really begin to step into this um, into this word and, and why this is important for the season. But first we're going to pray. We'll give God his due. Um, and then we're gonna get into what the Holy Spirit has to say to the church. And my prayer is that we're beginning to really walk in receiving what the Lord has to say. This is a time to receive. It's a time for you to become fertile ground yourself. It's time for you to ask God to disturb me, disrupt the things in my life that will keep me from being good ground. So God wants to plant some things on the inside of you. And we're going to let God do his work. Okay. Let God do his work. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. We just bless, praise, all to magnify your name. We thank you, Lord. You are truly a good and awesome God. And beside you, there is no other God. Uh, tonight, as we come before your throne of grace boldly, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to give us revelation insight, knowledge, and wisdom. It's in time. It's a season for you, God. Do what you need to do in the body of Christ. It's it's, it's your people. We're your assembly. We're your body. We're the ones that have the arms and the hands and the outreach. So God, I thank you that in this hour, you're going to begin to plant a seed of change on the inside of us. God, I thank you right now that you're moving by your power and by your spirit and that change is inevitable in your church. God, today, at this time, in this hour, God, wake up the church. Wake us up, God, so we can move forward as the mighty army that you call us to be. It's time for the church to move forward. It's time for us, God, to go and move, my God, into the newness of God, the destiny of God, the purpose of God, the new hope of God. It, it's like we're a moving train. My God, I see tracks on the front of me. We're like a train that's getting ready to hit its target. So God, I thank you for the journey, the journey ahead of us. Is a new one. The journey ahead of us is one that we've not been to before. There's destinations we have not embarked on before. But God, in this hour, I ask you to ready the church to withstand what you have to do in it. Now, God, I thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I am excited. I am excited. You know, I have been in a high time of receiving. Um, I don't know about everybody else, but I have been. Um, God has called me literally into um, purposeful prayer purposeful prayer. Um, he's called me in to meet with him. And I know that we, a lot of times will throw away all kind of protocols in the church. We throw it all out and say, you know, God's not doing that anymore. But how many people know that God is still God? And if he gives you protocol, if he gives you things to do, then you're still required to do them. <laughs> how many people know that God is not throwing away all the things that he's put in the earth? He's not just throwing them all away. God, in his infinite wisdom, um, knows how to allow us to come boldly into his presence. Even when Moses came to the burning bush, he told him, take your shoes off for the ground you stand on is holy ground. And so there are still things that God will cause us to do as we begin to prepare to come into the presence of me, the holy God. And so I, my prayer for you guys in this hour is that you continue to press into the God of heaven, not into, you know, our individual idols. <laughs> uh, it's important that we begin to hear him in this hour and allow him to begin to show us what it is that we need to do to really stand in the place that God has ready for us. Okay. So let's get into this a little bit tonight. We're going to talk about um, maturity about maturity. It is very important that the church begins to mature. And the reason why I feel that it's so important um, is because I feel like as a church, we are missing out on so many things that God wants to do in the earth. Remember, we are the church. We are the ambassadors. We are the embassy, as my sister said to me today. We're the embassy. Um, it, it, we are the ones that are the feet and the hands. We are what God, we, the, we make the move in the earth. We are the movement um, in the earth. And if we move immaturely, then we affect everything around us, meaning that what we do will stunt the growth of those that follow. Somebody say stunt the growth. Come on. What's going to happen if the church keeps moving in is an immature church? We're going to stunt the growth of those coming behind us. The church has to mature in this hour. We have to become all that God destined for us to be. I, I want you to say to yourself, it's not okay if I miss it. I want you to say to yourself, it's not okay if I don't, I don't get that, that last and final pour out. I, I want you to get 
comfortable with not being okay if you miss it. Like, you know, I think right now in our society, um, even as Christians, um, we all were, we start we start talking about like it's okay. It's kind of like lackadaisical kind of approach that we have. It's kind of like, you know, God knows my heart kind of approach that we take to the church. But I want you to understand that I want you to get uncomfortable with being okay if you miss goals, if you miss destiny, if you miss purpose. I mean, I want you to start actually, actually feeling some kind of way about it. I said, my mom is here. She'll be coming up in just a minute. I'll be bringing her up in just a moment, but I want you to start making it normal that it's not okay. And the reason why I say that is I do understand that we're under grace and I, and listen, I don't want to take away your grace. I don't want to take away your, your, your mercies that are renewed every day. I don't want to take that away from you. What I want you to do is get a fire in your belly that says, it's not okay for me not to become all that I'm supposed to be. I want you to say, it's not okay for me not to become. It's not okay for me to miss it. It's not okay for me to go a whole season of my life and not become what it is that God predestined for me to be. I want you to feel like I, it's just not okay. I, I'm not saying to be condemned. I'm not telling you that what I'm saying is that where's the fire? Where are those who are willing to walk? Where are those who are willing to say it's not okay if I don't become what it is I put in the earth to become? I want to know where the people are who say it's just not okay. We literally, we, 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 we wave the banner of grace over our heads so proudly. And I love grace. I mean, don't get it wrong. We are under grace. I thank God for grace. We need grace. But when is it, listen, when is it not okay to not to become? We are so lax of days ago with missing opportunities. Lax of days ago about not being all that God created us to be. Lacks of days ago with our poor. If I don't get it this year, I'll get it next year. We are so, la- we've become so complicit when it comes to the spirit of the living God. But I'm telling you that I want you to normalize that it's not okay for me not to become. It's not okay for me to miss destiny and opportunity. It's not okay. I don't want to be okay with it. I want God to open me up. I want God to to, to do surgery on the inside of me. I want God to let me become the solutionist in the earth that I'm supposed to be. It's not okay. It's not okay to miss it. Let me just bring my mom up and uh, let her come into this too. Hey, mom. Hey. (laughs) I got got so hyped up for a second. That's all right. I was 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 outside and I was like, Ooh, what time is it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get into those flowers and you know what happened. I know, right? I was Absolutely. just sharing with them the importance of saying it's not okay. And, you know, I, I know that I said, you know, the church has become so lackadaisical when it comes to their purpose and their mm. destiny. The enemy is lulling us to sleep. He's literally Absolutely. letting us walk around in a daze. And I need somebody to say, it's just okay. I, I didn't get here. God didn't bring me this far to leave me. I didn't come this far in my life to now go to sleep and miss God. It's just not, I want you to normalize that it's just not okay. I'm not going to miss it. And so in order for me not to miss it, mom, I got to mature. I got to to mature. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we've got to want to mature in Christ. You know, and it's not, it's not okay. I think we've gotten to a place where we've become, um, like, you, you know, you said the word lackadaisical, you know, and we've become um, um, just, I'm going to say it this way. We've become lazy, <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. we've become just pretty, just pretty much lazy. And, and we sometimes it's because we don't see that there's any consequences. And, and it's like, you know, it's like, well, you know, I didn't do it here and I didn't make a commitment here because many times it's about being committed. And when we find that we can't commit to things we don't commit to Christ. And most times we're not committed to certain things. We do them as long as we uh, are feeling great or or about doing it. But the minute we feel a little something going on, we become like, okay, well, you know what? I- I'm not going to push it as hard. Or I've been asking God to do something that doesn't seem like it, it's going to happen. So it looks like I'm going to have to do it myself. And so we just start doing it the way we want to do it and it's okay god understands and we start trying to put scripture on that you know we all sin and come short of the glory of god you right. know that's the kind of the key scripture and, and and but i agree with you that it's not okay you know because the thing is the reason it's not okay it, it's because we miss out on what god has for us that's right we miss out on all the benefits of it not of it you know following Christ. It says that if we're willing and obedient, we'll eat the good of the land. 
That's and right. and That's so right. we we miss out on the things that God has for us because we kind of half do it. You know, there, there was right. a song a songwriter wrote years right. ago and it said, 99 and a half won't do. You remember that song? That's right. That's you right. Know, 99 and a half won't do. And, and so we think, well, I did this and I did that. And we started trying to um, uh, decide that, you know, we've done enough. You know, we, we decide, okay, well, I've done enough here. And I, and I did this over here. And I, I gave my tithes and my offering. And I, and, I, and I didn't miss no church for six months. And, you Ooh. know, we started trying to negotiate this thing in our head and decide that it's okay if I'm not doing it 100% this month or 100% that month. And, and, and so we, we find ourselves, though, the minute we start backing off, it becomes comfortable. That's right. It becomes comfortable not to not do it all the way. But I, but I have to go to the songwriter when he said 99 and a half won't do. That's it right. won't do. We've got to give God everything. If we want to reap the benefits of what God has for us, we got to give him our all. We got to give him our all. And when we find that we're not, we got to push a little harder. We got to stretch a little further. We got to pray a little longer. You know what I'm saying? Because if we don't, you know, we will find ourselves being um, missing out, missing yeah. out, for lack of a better word, missing out on the benefits. And there's so many benefits to giving God your all. That's so good. And I'm going to read this scripture really quick. And this is um, Philippians 3 and 12 through 14. It says, not that I have already obtained this. This is Paul speaking. Not that I have already obtained this or I'm already perfect. But I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Mm. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind. Yeah. And come on, pressing forward to what yeah. lies ahead. I yeah. press on towards the mark or yeah. the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And when we begin to be maturing in Christ, we've got to understand that spiritual maturity is a continual process of pressing forward. Absolutely. I forget the things behind me and press towards the mark. It's a continual giving of knowledge. It's a continual pressing into Christ. It's a, it's a continual of having God reorder my steps, reorder my priorities. It, it's a continual pleasing yes. God and not pleasing the self. And too often we put self before God. We put our own priorities before God. We put our own will before God. And when yes. we do that, we lose ground. And every day that we lose ground is another day that we lose time and destiny and Absolutely. purpose. And I want to say this, mom, because I know it's another one we like to throw out there. We always want to go to the scripture that God's going to restore the years and the canker mm -hmm. worms. Say that, okay? mm -hmm. How do people know that he doesn't do that for everybody? Oh, see. He don't do that for everybody. Like We, we almost never feel like it's just an automatic thing. But mm -hmm. we got to understand that it's not anything that's just automatic. <laughs> you mm -hmm. got to have Christ tell you, I'm going to mm -hmm. do that for you. That's See, right. some of us are like living lackadaisical lives and using it as a fallback. Like we just mm -hmm. fall back mm -hmm. on the scripture and say, that's what God is mm -hmm. saying to me. Maybe mm -hmm. he didn't say that to you. Listen, Hezekiah had to turn his face to the wall and ask for 15 more years. Yes, yeah. Hey, listen, you got to understand that he had a promise over his life. So what you got to begin to understand is that we need to count every day as the day that it could mm -hmm. be the last day. Mm -hmm. So today I'm going to get it right. Today I'm going to ask God to do it in my life. Today I'm going to stop what I'm doing in my tracks. And I'm going to ask God to not only give me more time, but I'm going to ask God to let me have strength to stand and press towards that mark. I understand mm -hmm. that we are not perfect people, but we need to understand that at some point, at some point in your Christian walk, maturity should come. Maturity right. should come. I got to get further than where I'm at. I, yeah. I, like you said, mom, I was on the same pew for 20 years and I haven't changed that one bit. Wow. Is that happening to me? At yeah. some point, you've got to mature in the things of That's God. Right. It's the process right. of saying, God, we ordered me. Process of God conditioned me. God showed me. God ordered my steps. God take me. God produced something through me. And we've got to stop saying, it's okay, we keep missing it. Right. It's okay if I stay in right. And, and we, we, we decide that it's okay. My God. You know, we, we make Decided. up our mind that it's okay. You know, you know you, you're, you're saying something there that, that's so... Um, needed to be said when you say it's time to mature because who how many of us you know, at my age or your age still sitting in the kindergarten chair 
My God. You know what I'm saying? First of all, you're sitting in a room, you know, with people that don't have the knowledge that you have. And That's you're right. too big for the seat. You know, That's you're right. you know, you you you're bigger than the than the, the kindergartners, and you still sitting there and taking in kindergarten information. And, and I'm right. telling you, it when you understand that you have to migrate through, you know, um, each step and, and, and let God process you because as you process you, you gain more and more and more knowledge. You gain more right. knowledge. You learn how to do it. But sometimes we get stuck and we don't want to move any further because then we allow the enemy to come in and speak in our ear and tell us we're becoming fanatical. That's right. That's right. See, and what he'll do is he'll throw that word and say, well, you're just becoming a fanatic. You you know you're gonna you know you you know you're gonna you're doing, you're doing too, too much, much. You know, that's, you you just over the top with what you're trying to do you got too much Jesus uh, you you know what I'm saying but you know that God won't let you become Super fanatical and, and you won't be over the top because when you begin to mature in Him you'll understand how to just walk in wisdom. That's right. You know, you you're right. walking wisdom with what God is giving you. You know, you won't That's become right. fanatical at what you're doing. So the thing is that we have to mature. As we mature, God gives us more knowledge and understanding, and we That's have right. wisdom because wisdom is what the key thing. That's right. It's the principal thing. That's right. You know, and, and so when we understand that, but the thing is, is that we 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 get a you know you know, Pastor, I really believe that people become afraid to walk because they are fearful of what might happen. They, they so long have lived with that another level, another devil. You, you know what I'm saying? They right. lived with that mindset for so long that people become afraid to allow God to move them into another realm and who he is. And, and, and so when, so they, so they stop. They decide that I'm not going through that because I don't want to have to deal with these devils. I don't want to have to deal with any more things in my calamities in my life. And so they kind of feel like a safe place. That's right. I'm safe right here. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I got enough. God bless me. I, I got enough. I, I don't need no more. I don't need to go through no more hell. You know, I don't want to go through nothing else with these, with these demons. I don't want to do it. So they get into what they call a safe place and they stay there. And that's what the enemy wants us to do. They want us to, he wants us to get into a place where we think it's safe and we want to allow God to do what he's going to do in our lives because we walk in fear. That's right. And it's That's fear right. that keeps us from moving into a greater relationship with God. And, and right. when we get into a spirit of fear, we can't move. We become paralyzed there. And we stay there and say, well, this is just enough. I, I got enough Jesus to I, I'll make it in. That's right. You know, and, and, and then it's, it's so sad because you miss out on all the things. God has so much more for us. And, and I have to say, I, I was in that place one time. I was in that place one time where I kind of feel like, well, I don't think I'm going to go no further. This is enough. If I if I get too much Jesus, I'm, I might, you know, you know, you see all the movies where people lose their mind. They acting real crazy. They just real Jesus fanatics. And, 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 and that kind of stuff gets stuck in people's head and they don't want to do it. So, but I'm here to tell you that we don't serve that kind of God that's going to drive us crazy you know, uh, um, um, allow us to begin to have mental problems because we begin to serve him with our whole heart and our whole mind. He tells us to serve him with our whole heart. And, and when we begin to do that, we'll begin to see the benefits that God has for us. That's right. And it's it's so true. Um, you know, I remember being paralyzed by fear. And I, and I told this story before, but I'll tell it again tonight when the Lord called me and, and told me that I was scared of him. Because he was asking me to promote, he was asking me to go higher, he was asking me to come closer. And as a matter of fact, I had had um, a vision where the Lord was grabbing me closer and saying, Come closer. And he was yanking me back behind this veil, telling me to come closer. And I was scared to, because um, I heard another level of the devil, and I was done with the devils. I, I felt like I had been beat up pretty good. I had had all the devils I was going to have, and I wasn't going to go any, any further. And the Lord had to come and deliver me from the fear of him. Mm -hmm. I, I had feared that, I, that he was trying to do something to me. And that's what the Lord gave me that scripture. For the plans I have for you are good and not evil. Because yeah. I think that yeah. he had plans concerning me. And the Lord said, I don't have that for you. And so I had to get, I had to get free from that. And so the thing is that you can only get free like that in a place of maturity. Galatians 5 and 16 says this. So I say... 
walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. In order for us to understand God, we've got to mature because see, my flesh told me, don't go any further. My flesh right. told me it's going to hurt, it's going to hurt, it's going to hurt. My flesh told me you got to give up comforts. You got to give up stuff in your life. You got to give it up. That's the flesh. But the spirit man said, if you come closer, mm -hmm. if, if, you, if you let God pull you and draw you, there's more. And there's mm -hmm. more in your life. And so we've got to become more spirit focused and less flesh focused or we're not going to mature. Maturity mm -hmm. says I put aside my fears. I put aside yeah. my flesh i put aside my comforts and walk with god i put it aside and the problem is that we've gotten so comfortable that we forget that the persecution is part of christ yeah you're Ooh. persecuted with him you'll carry crosses That's as he right. carried the bible tells you that afflictions are many so yeah. you gotta understand that affliction is a part of your walk That's carrying right. cross is a part of your walk. Listen, I'm hurt to say, I hate to say this to some people out there, it might scare you a little bit, but pain is a part of your walk. That's and right. once you embrace the fact that it's part of my walk, you can now begin to move into the spirit of what God is mm -hmm. saying to you because mm -hmm. you got to mature. And only right. can mature is in the valley. You, you can't mature on the mountaintop because on the mountaintop, right. ain't nothing wrong. You mature in the valley where God is telling That's you right. that you ain't got That's no right. money. You, you, you down and out. And all you got is a name, which is Jesus. Wow. And the valley is where God says, that's all you got is my grow. name. That's all you right. got is my faith. All you got is your faith. You may not have anything but the faith at this point. That's right. All you got is your faith that God is going to do it. All you got is faith is that God's promises are true. All you got is your faith that he's a faithful God. That's all you got in the valley. That's right. And in the, when you come out of the valley, as you always say, as Samuel grew, when you come out nah. of the valley... Mm -hmm. Then you begin to mature because now you are relatable to people. Now you understand hardship. You understand what it is to suffer a little while. Come That's on. Right. After you suffer a little while, my God, he's going to take you somewhere. That's so right. It's important that we stop allowing the enemy to keep us babes and on milk because you cannot mm -hmm. go where you need to go in Christ mm -hmm. if you can run during That's this right. season only place you'll get there, mom, is you let him mature you That's and right. roll you Absolutely. up in this thing. Absolutely. Cast That's down right. but not destroy. You know, cast down you know, but not you know, destroy. Cast down but not destroy. You, you know, there's many times that we go through things and, you know, I, I'm, you know, we, we go through different, different types of things. There's different times where God's been torn us in different parts of our life. And, and, and so, you know, but like I said, we become afraid to allow God to, um, take the reins per se. You know right, what I'm saying? We, right. we, we want, you know, we want to, uh, you know, we want to uh, allow God to take just a little bit of the reins. We want to hold on to one of them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, God, I give you this one, but I'm going to hold on to this one just in case I don't like where you're taking me. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, right. when you're on a horse and you got the reins, you got two of them. You know, and, and he got that bridle in his mouth for you to steer him where he needs to go. But you can't have one rein pulling this way and one rein pulling that way because because then the animal becomes confused. And, and, and so that's what happens. And the confusion comes in when we're not allowing God to take both the reins and take us where he wants to. Because the enemy is pulling this one or you're pulling this one and God pulling that one. And then you become I'm confused. You're confused because that's you right. are trying to hold on to the reins that's and right. won't turn them over to God. That's and, right. And so that's what happens. And so, you know, you got to know that God's not going to guide you anywhere that you don't need to be. He said, the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. And if he's going to order your steps, then you've got to allow him to take control so that he can move you into the place. There, there are some sweatless victories. You know, we think that every time we there's a battle that we're going to have to do all this fighting and we have to go through all these things. But, you know, there, God will give us sweatless victories. You know, when, I, when we're talking about... Um, Asa here last week when I was talking about him and how he had those 5,000 uh, soldiers and in, in, uh, he was coming up against the Egyptian. They had a million. And he was like, how in the world am I going to take my 500,000 and go against a million that surely will be defeated? But because God was in control of what he told Asa to go do, God confused the enemy. Mm. Uh, it didn't matter that it was a million of them. You know, it that's didn't right. matter because God allowed him to go in and win the victory. And, and so that's what we got to understand. I don't care how big and how terrible it looks to you. You got to know that if you give God the rings, that God has already determined the outcome of what you're going through. But God is going to know if you're willing to go through it. 
That's Are you willing said. to go through it? Because sometimes it's not going to be the battle that you think it's going to be. Asa thought it was going to be a huge battle, but it wasn't because they begin to turn on themselves and slaughter each other. And that's what the enemy will do when God is in control. God will cause the enemy to turn on himself and you'll end up with a sweatless victory because you allow God to take the reins. You know what I hear you saying, mom, is that we have to learn how to take instruction. Yeah, learn to instruction. Absolutely. And see, the Holy Spirit is the one that gives instruction. And the problem with a lot of us is that we can't even hear his voice to get instruction. OK, we've got to learn how to surrender our control. We got to learn how to surrender our soul's control to the spirit man. And that's how we learn how to get instruction. The characteristic of spiritual maturity is growth. Right. Maturity. It means mm -hmm. the fruit of the spirit. When you know that you've grown, you, you, you got some fruits of the spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. The fruits of the spirit mm -hmm. are what? Mm -hmm. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Mm -hmm. Come on. Against such things, there's no law. And so for us to really be able to understand what he's got, mm -hmm. we've got to be able to take instruction. Yes. You can't get anywhere in your life without taking instruction from Absolutely. the Lord. You know, I, I find it amazing that we literally will ask God to give us mentors. We ask God to give us instruct instructors and all kind of things. But when they come and they try to instruct you, you want to fight against them. Yes. It is important yes. that we learn how to take instruction. It's important you learn how to be teachable. These are signs of maturity. If you can't take correction, you're not maturing. If you can't That's take right. instruction, you're not maturing. If you can't take it, you, you're not maturing. And self-control, I'm telling you, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. You gotta learn to control yourself. Yes. Because that's a fruit of saying I'm growing. I can love people in spite of. I can do this in spite of. And you that's when you know you're growing. Because if God is ordering your steps, that's still instruction. Yes. God can order your steps, you're not listening. We will See? always say the steps of a righteous man are ordered of God. But, but the caveat to that is mm -hmm. you got to listen to him and follow the steps. Absolutely. God Absolutely. can give you steps every single day. Absolutely. He can walk you straight down a path and point to it and, and click it and tick it all he wants to. But if you don't walk in the instructions that he's given you, you're still not going to get there. Absolutely. And if we're going to mature, we've got to understand instruction. And we don't like instruction. Mm -hmm. Mother will tell us what to do. Mm -hmm. And as long as we stay in that place, listen, if you can't listen to mentors, you definitely can listen to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not standing in front of your face. You're mm -hmm. not going to listen to that. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't understand it, I, I hear God. I listen to him. No, you don't. If he mm -hmm. gave you a person in your life to bless you and to be over you and to help you and to guide you, you can listen to them, you definitely That's right. Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if this person in front of you is full flesh, you ain't listening mm -hmm. to them at all. Mm -hmm. so if you listen to the Spirit mm -hmm. that you can't touch, you're going to keep on doing what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And it's just an that's, excuse. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's an excuse to say, I'm, 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 I, I hear God. I, I, I don't need that. No, it's an excuse for you to exactly. walk in your, to lean to your own to understanding. Lean in your flesh. That's right. That's all mm -hmm. it is. Excuse to lean to your own understanding. Mm -hmm. So maturity in the body of Christ is what's keeping the church from becoming all that it needs to be. The that's Lord right. is coming for the church. He's coming. What he's saying is, I want to give you, I want you to have, I want you to have instructions. I want you to have money. I want you to have what I want you to have what I want you to have, but you've got to let me instruct you in the night season, instruct you in your day season, instruct you as you walk. There's paths that he's laid out for you, but if you can't walk it, you can't be instructed, you can't listen, you can't be corrected, you can't mature, and you can't go. And it's so That's important right. to begin to get that in the body of Christ. There's always be somebody giving you some instruction, and the, right. most definitely the Holy Spirit will always right. instruct you. And that's a sign of your maturity to be still and listen to what he has to say. That's right. You know, that, that that is that is so true. You know, that it's a sign of your maturity when you learn how to be submitted to authority. That's right. Be submitted. You know, and some people don't want to submit because they feel like, you know, they've heard so many things about um, witchcraft and control and all yes. those kinds of things. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I think they've mm -hmm. oversaturated that. You know, My but God, you got to learn if you're going to grow that you have to learn how to come up under authority. That's right. You know, and, and sometimes, you, you know, you, the authority may point you in a direction that you've never been before. Doesn't mean that the authority is wrong, but sometimes they're taking you away that God is instructing them to take you. But sometimes you want the easy way. You don't want to go the harder path. You don't want, you don't want to be the trailblazer. It, it, it's funny. Yesterday, um, my husband and I were out uh, riding. And when we got down to a certain part of Gratiot where we were driving, which normally we could go straight through to go to our destination, there was a detour. Mm -hmm. And so we had to take this detour. 
And I was almost kind of tipped because I was driving and I was almost tempted not to go down that road because it didn't, it looked a little bumpy, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, I don't want to take my car down that road. But nonetheless, we went down that road and what we discovered that there was land and houses and things that we've never seen before. And my husband said something, he said, boy, it's really a strange how many people some people would just go out and build find some land and build it somewhere he said you would never know that this kind of property was out here you know why because they searched it out they they took a chance they went in a, a direction that nobody else went and they discovered some things and they were able to acquire some things that you and i may never acquire because we're a little afraid to take a detour or to take instruction to go in a way that maybe we want to go one way but we're sending another way sometimes it's okay to detour Sometimes, it, so it, you know, because God will give you um, pastors and leaders that will give you instruction. And just like you do when you're raising your children, your children, both your children need different types of things. You know, when I was raising uh, you and, and, and your sister, you know, you both required a different kind of instruction. That's because right. you're different kind of people. people doesn't mean that the instruction was worse for one or better for one or whatever. You know, the thing is, is that, you know, I, I had to learn that I when growing up. I grew up in a house with seven children and, and I always thought I was getting the short end of the stick. But what I found out was my mother had to treat me a certain kind of way because I was a different kind of person. You know, right. she had to do me a certain kind of way. My brother, she did him a certain kind of way and because he God had already ordained his life to be a pastor. You know, so I'm saying, so we know when God tells us something that there are certain things that we have to do and we have to have the same type of mindset when we're leaders and we're instructing the people that are under us. And they have to understand that you may not be treated like this one over here or treated like that one over here, but this one over here needs some instruction because there's another purpose and a plan for that one's life. And so we got to learn how to mature enough. And I had to mature enough to begin to understand why my mother did me the way she did me because she needed to do me that way because I needed a different kind of instruction for her to get me where I needed to go. And, and so we've got to understand that when we mature in the faith, we began to understand what God's doing. We understand that God will give you leaders. And many, many times we want to run away from that leader because we don't like the way they take us. We got to, we didn't map out the plan for our own life. And when it doesn't follow the plan that we have for our life, what do we do? We tuck and run. That's right. That's right. And you know, and then the immature saint will see instruction or correction as an attack. And this yes. is why I'm saying that we've got to mature because when somebody's trying to just help you, you perceive the help as an attack because you have not matured, you have not grown. And everybody has to have a different approach to what correction looks like, to a mature, all that has a different approach. And, and even in the body of Christ, God will approach you differently. He approaches Kimberly Burnett and Brittany, two different kinds of ways, they're different kinds Absolutely. of people. And as a leader, I approach my team in different kinds of ways. They're different types of people. The Lord will show me personalities. He shows me underlying things. He shows me. So what one, I might be able to be a little bit more of a coddler. Another I have to be real strong with because he knows their personality has to be broken. You have to understand that God does it. But instead, what we do is we're outside looking in, trying to figure out why it's happening. What you need to figure out is what God's doing in your life and mature in your life. And grow. If we can stop watching everybody else, we can grow into what we need to be. You know, I think about how, you know, when we, when we look in scripture, a lot of times, you know, we, we see we see Peter. And, and in Peter, the Bible talks about how Peter's shadow was extinct of his anointing. You know, Peter will walk mm -hmm. around and his mm -hmm. shadow will fall upon people, right? Acts 5 and 15 through 16. It says, so that they brought the sick out in the streets and laid them on beds and couches at, that at least the shadow of Peter's passing might fall on some of them. Right. And so Peter's shadow will fall on some people and they will actually get healed. And I used to ask God, like, how do we get to that point? And God said, you got to mature to that point. Mm -hmm. The other disciples could be mad at Peter's shadow falling around healing people. Now, we, we get mad about stuff like that. Well, why his yeah. shadow? Healed? We, yeah. we, we get the whole focus off the fact that that's a good, wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. And how do you get there? And how can I grow to that level? And so we get jealous and start acting out. And we, we're going to hate Peter. Right. So for us to take our attention 
on what we need to do to maybe walk in that level of gifting. Mm -hmm, we mm -hmm. got to stop being jealous and, and petty and upset about something we don't have and ask God, what is it mm -hmm. I need to do to walk in a level that my own spirit exudes from me? God, what do I need my to do? God, I can yes. walk as a glory carrier as well. What do I need yes. to do that I can affect the kingdom of God this way? What do I need to do That's that right. when I'm walking into a city, that the city can feel the shaking of the kingdom of God? But instead, mm -hmm. what we do in an immature state is we fight against the thing that yes. God is using to bless the people. Absolutely. God is using Peter. And, and I'm saying that we have been taught incorrectly. Our minds are becoming more carnal. We're becoming right. more messy, so to speak. We're starting to fight the thing that God wants to use to promote the church. But That's right. We find ourselves fighting it because we're not mature. And right. as long as we're immature saints walking around fighting each other, God can't bring to the unity of the faith and do what he needs to do in the body That's collectively. Right. That's right. As long as, mom, we're standing in these places we're going to hinder the move of God in the earth. It is so important. The church begins to mature. We should already be going to our, our church corners and preaching. And, the, and the people in a whole city feel it already. That's right. That's We've right. Been, That's right. Already be having tent meetings and the whole city feeling it already. That's we right. should, that should already be happening. That's well, why right. is it happening? Because the church has come. The church is almost moving backwards. Mm -hmm. We are getting less mature. Mm -hmm. And so God mm -hmm. is saying, I need you to get on the meat. I need you to get your eyes off each other and get your eyes squarely mm -hmm. planted on me. Stop looking at what they're doing and what they're not doing and look at what you're not doing. That's the right. Pole of your eye is big enough. Work on your pole. It's important. That's right. Because if we can't get together, the That's body right. of Christ, you know, mom, it's the reason why God talks about the body being connected and interconnected. Mm -hmm. and he didn't do that by happenstance. He did that on purpose. That's right. As long as the enemy can can convince us to fight each other, we, we we're never going to go where we need to go. Absolutely. But only but maturity is what causes you to stop seeing your brother as an enemy and mm -hmm. see them as a, a as a partner, mm -hmm. as you know, as someone you can walk with, as someone you can talk with, someone mm -hmm. you can agree with. You know, we don't even want to agree with people if they're not in our same mm -hmm. denomination. Mm -hmm. so, well, so, you, we, we got to stop this Cain kill Abel thing. Say you it know, again. The, the Cain kill Abel. You know, we, we, we've got that mindset in the church, you know, that, you know, with Cain killed Abel mindset because we was like, well, your sacrifice, you know, he took your sacrifice. He didn't accept my sacrifice. And, and you know, I, I, I'm not the eggs. I want to be the eggs. I don't want to be the sugar. You know, I want to be the bread. I don't want to be the meat. You, you know what I'm saying? You, it, we've got to understand the position that God puts us in and begin to be able to stand in that position because there, once those, everybody is like a, a well-refined orchestra. You know what I'm saying? When we, God is orchestrating this thing. And when the church gets it, that they're not the whole cake, that it took some other stuff to help make it. Do you know what I'm saying? And when we get to a place where we understand that we need to stand in our perspective places, if I was supposed to be an A, I'd be an A. I'm the sugar. You know what I'm saying? If I was right. supposed to be the flower, I would be the flower, but I'm the A. And they all right. have their purpose and the intended purpose for their lives. And as long as we keep fighting, wanting to be something other than what God has called us to be, we are going to always be dysfunctional we're going to always be, um, we're, we're never going to come together like a puzzle, trying to fit the wrong piece into the part on a puzzle. As long as you do that, it will never come together and function. And we will ever see the full picture of what God's doing with the body because we're too busy not fitting in the spot where we're supposed to be. We want to be the edge and not the center. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and so right. we we got to understand that God places us where we need to be placed. He places us with the leaders. He, he wants us to mature in the faith. And as we mature in the faith, as we begin to seek God for maturity in the faith, God will begin to reveal and give you revelation of why you are where That's you right, are. God. I've always, I always said to you, and I say it again, and I've said it to you probably 10,000 times, Apostle, that God made you a trailblazer. Hmm. You are a trailblazer. That God used you to open doors and to do things that nobody else has ever done. And, and, and so sometimes it's hard to be a trailblazer because you know you got to take all the hits. You got to go through some things and nobody else. But when you do it, somebody is standing in the wings 
waiting for you to blaze that trail. You know, it says when Christ came, it says when everything was ready, it said then he came when they when they opened up the fields and made highways and byways and ways for Christ to get where he needed to go. It says when the time had fully come. Come on, when the full Christ came, time. You That's know, right. and, and, and because there was things and highways and things that he had to go through, but somebody had to go and blaze the trail and open up the fields and make the roads so that the people could get. And, and so when God is using you to do that, you might take some hits. That's right. But you're cast down, but not destroyed. Not destroyed. But God is using you because you know why? Because you know you can take it. That's right. But you won't even know you can take it unless you go the route that God has given you, maturing in the faith and understanding that God got me, that I'm going to let him take the reins and take me where he wants me to go. That's right. That's right. You know, we got to literally be people who receive the truth of God. And we're able to pass it down in a mature way. And, you know, I, I was saying this earlier when we when we first started that the problem with immature Christians is that we, we make immature generations. We, we make, you know, infant generations. We make generations come up that are crippled generations. One of the biggest issues I, I find right now in the church is that if I had to replicate, because, because really what Christianity is a replication of Christ in the mm -hmm. earth. So your life, your walk with God is replicated. So whoever you're coming into contact with, they're watching your Jesus, okay? Mm -hmm. Whatever version of Jesus you give them, that's what they're watching. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you an example of that. I used to teach Sunday school. I used to teach the, the young kids. And they would come to church, and I would teach them what the Bible says. Then they would tell me all the things their parents was doing in the house. That was not what the Bible says, okay? <laughs> And so you have to write a delicate line because I'm teaching you what you're supposed to do, but your parents is living the opposite of what I'm telling you. Okay. So the kids will come in and tell me, yeah, my parents not doing this, not doing that. And nine times out of 10 though, even though I was teaching the kids, the representation of Christ, they were learning from the parents in the mm -hmm. home. So Absolutely. what you're doing is though you're telling me with your words, you're walking out something completely different and your children are mimicking what they're actually seeing every day. Mm -hmm. So that, that means that even though they're hearing of the word, you hearing it, but you're being a doer of the thing that you're patterned at. That's right. So if you're a Christian and you're immature and you're walking in immature faith, most likely your child is going to walk that same walk that you're walking. So you mm -hmm. can take them to church on Sundays, but if you live in seven, six of the seven days of the week, any kind of way, they're going to mm -hmm. rub them six or seven days of the week that they don't see mm -hmm. it. It's mm -hmm. just it's what's going to happen because they, they're going to say it's a contradiction. And so it's very important that we understand that we have to mature so that we help the generations behind us. We got to mature so they understand how to have protocol. We mature so they understand honor and respect. If you, you listen, they're going to mimic what you do. You wonder why things are happening because you probably you probably showed them that. Now, I'm not saying it happens all the time. I mean, some kids it's cut up. You know, matter how you raise them, they're going to cut up. Mm -hmm, At the end mm -hmm. of the day, you need to ask yourself and be honest with yourself, though. If what I'm living is replication for my kids to follow or the generation to follow. So the Lord's been telling me is that what we need to do as the body of Christ is today. Begin to live the life you want to see the generations coming behind you live. If you want your generations to be greater, if you want to walk in a greater level, we've got to mature so that when, so, you know, here's the thing Mom, that, that always comes to me. When I first started doing um, Dreams and Visions, um, there was no one to guide me in it. You know, right. you know the story. Everybody knows the story, mostly uh, that know me, that the Holy Spirit literally himself raised me in this gift. You know, he would tell me people to watch. And, and John Paul Jackson, I credit mostly because he's the only one I ever knew that actually had this particular type of gift. So I would watch him endlessly. Um, and so because of his knowledge and, and the things that he's done, I was able to I didn't have to necessarily go through all of the years that he went through trying to figure it out. You know, the right. Lord is a path. He would break dreams down. He would break it all down. The, the work that he did in, in the dream realm is amazing work. And so when so when I come into the, the scene with it, the Lord gives it or gives me that foundation of what he already did. And now I'm building on the foundation that he laid. So yeah. every time a generation comes, they should be building on the foundation that we've laid already. Yes. Yeah. They, they mm -hmm. can't build on something that's not there. 
That's they can't build on, or they can't build something that's broken, that's cracked, that's like sand. They can't build on that. So it's important that we take responsibility for what it is that we need to do in the earth. I want to be a solutionist. I want I want my light to shine. I want to be. I want to pour out what I'm supposed to pour out. I want to become what I'm supposed to become. I don't want to fall back. I want to be hindered. I want to do what it is that God's telling me to do. So that at the end of my life, the foundation that I'm supposed to lay is set. So yes. that the generation that's coming behind me now has what I built to stand on, or what God has given me to build to stand on, so they will mm-hmm. go higher and further mm-hmm. and advance the kingdom even the more. But we're mm-hmm. almost stopped building. Mm-hmm. We've kind of regressed. We we're kind of like you know moving towards more secular way of doing church. Right. I mean, as long as we're not revelatory the way we're supposed to be, as long as we're mm-hmm. not. Uh, uh, using wisdom and understanding that we were supposed to, as long as we're not allowing God to pour in his mysteries into us, because the Bible says that, that revelation is to the third and fourth generation. Mm-hmm. So when we're not tapping in to get it, mm-hmm. the generations behind us do not benefit from it. And I'm going to, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to go back to what I said in the beginning. you got to stop being okay with missing your work. That's right. Stop okay with, with missing opportunities. Stop being okay with missing windows. Stop being okay with missing doors. Stop being okay with it because when you're okay with it, you're literally crippling the generation mm-hmm. behind you. And what's mm-hmm. that going to do in the earth? Making them weak. You know, and, and like I said, when we, you know, we're building a weak generation and we can't do that because like you said, if we don't build them with strength and teach them how to go through something, Oh, that's you know, good. we got to know how to go through. You know, we got to know how to that's fight good. through. We got we got to know how not to have. We got to know how that it's okay for you to hurt. It's okay for you to cry. It's okay for you not to have the things that you think you should have at a certain age. It's okay. When you were saying that, you know, like you said, it's not okay not to give God the reins. But it's okay for us to go through because it builds character. It right. builds strength. You know, it, it's it's okay. You know, when we plant a seed, that seed, it, you know, you you you, I'm amazed at the strength of just a seed, because when you look at when you put that seed down in that soil and how heavy that soil is, and how that little seed, when that when that when it starts to grow, when it breaks apart, first it dies, and then it then it then it begins to grow, and it pushes through that heavy soil. I'm amazed at what a seed will do because it will grow and it'll push through that soil and come up. I mean, heavy soil. You pack it down over top of that seed. And the next thing you know, that seedling is coming up through that heavy soil because it's a seed and it was designed to be able to break through that. That soil doesn't become a a, a deterrent because it was made for that seed to grow in. And when it's made for the seed to grow in, it can push through anything. That's right. And, and, And so when we do that, when we plant a seed in our generations to come, they can fight through some of these hard times they will be able to fight through it because it's they they have the power and the thing on the inside of them to grow and if we want to grow apostle what we got to do we got to die to christ we gotta die we gotta die if we want to grow and we're not willing to die we we want to we want to lay there, you know, they say playing possum with one eye open. You know, we, we don't want to die. We don't we don't completely die to Christ. We want to keep one eye open just to make sure it's going to work out okay. But when we completely turn our whole life over and we die in Christ, we can grow and be and have the power and the strength because on the inside, what you said, on the inside of us is power. You know, I want to say this. Really quick, I mean, exceedingly abundantly above all we can think or ask according to what the power that's on the inside. That's only that seed can push through that soil because of the power and the depth of what's on the inside of that seed. Sorry about that. I'm I'm sorry, you gotta no, 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 you're not <laughs> taking over. No, 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 that's that was perfectly fine. I just had a thought. Um, but um, I just had a thought about what you were saying about you know what I was saying about it's 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 not okay. And, and, you know, the thing I'm saying to you is that we're not perfect people by any means. And there is no condemnation in Christ. I'm not telling you to feel condemned. 
And I don't want you to feel like your life, whether you made the mark or, or didn't make the mark, is, is anything. You know, God can restore whatever he likes to. His grace and mercy is there. But what I want you to understand is that pressing towards the mark is a continual press. Meaning that if you fall down, you get back up. Meaning that if you detour, you get back on the right track. Meaning that if you, you, don't, you don't stay in a state of sin. You don't stay in a state of lax. You don't stay in a state of being lukewarm. You don't just live there. And I feel like what happens to us as we just, we live there. We don't mm-hmm. want to die because death hurts. I mean, it's mm-hmm. dying to mm-hmm. flesh. I mean, you know, our flesh screams and hollers. And so, you know, it's like we don't want to have to give that up. You know, when you come to church, you come to Christ, you do come as you are. Whatever you got going on, you bring it to him. Mm-hmm. But you can't stay there. Right. God will take you tattoo, pierced, sin, transgender, homosexual, adulterer, murderer. He 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 gonna take you for all the things that you are. That's Nasty, right. dirty, stinky, smelly, offended, bitter. He gonna take you just the way that you are. That's right. That's but right. the thing is, you cannot keep that bitterness in the house. You That's can't right. keep that stinkiness. In the house, at some point, you got to relinquish that thing to God so that you can become. And in the process of becoming, it's maturity. You got to become. If you're still petty when you came to church, you're still petty 20 years later, you you ain't becoming. You're the same person you were. You're still an infant. So you should have some growth. You might have been a partier, short skirt wearing, whatever, when you came to God. But at some years down the line, somewhere, some should convict your spirit to take that off. To stop right. doing that, to become right. something else. You, you you got to be changing and growing and maturing. And I'm sick and tired of people acting like when I come to Christ, that's the end. The mm-hmm. end. It's that's not, it's right. not your that's life right. is supposed to become something. Like you said, that's that right. Steve died. When you died and came to Christ, now the growth process has to begin to start. And some of you mm-hmm. still see. That's right. You still uh, see uh, you still uh, the dirt. You ain't even right. you sprouted nothing. That's right. And uh, if you don't yeah. sprout anything, you never come into the light. You're never going to bloom. You're never going to flower. You're never going to sit on nobody's table. You're That's never right. going to showcase. That's right. You've got That's to right. die. That's and you've right. got to keep dying That's every right. day That's until right. you complete the process that God has for you. Uh, 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 Prophetess Kelly is on. And she said something. And she said, you got to stop playing possum. <laughs> you got to stop pretending like you did. And you just playing possum. Okay, so and, and, and so you got to understand that you got to completely die to this thing in order for God to grow you into what he wants you to be. He's given us the power to do what he's called us to do. Yeah. And I, I thought that was just so uh, right on point when she said, stop playing possum. That's true. Die to Christ. Die. Give because your life. it's time to stop pretending that you're dead and die. That's right. You know, I love it when people pretend to be humble. You only tricking yourself. God know you're humble or not. Stop mm-hmm. pretending and let God have it. You know, let him have it. So it's seven o'clock. We've been on for an hour. <laughs> and um, I pray that this has blessed you all um tonight. It's on my heart to help the church grow into what it's supposed to be. I really believe that um, we're crippling the church by allowing the church to continue to move along the path, the line that it's moving on. Somebody got to say something. Um, I think the most popular, you know, these are usually unpopular words in the church. And unfortunately, uh, it may not get a lot of attention. But at this stage in the game, you got to decide that I want my flesh to scream a little bit so I can live a lot. You know what I'm saying? Ah, God's going to do some things in your life. Mm-hmm. And he's going to do it. He's gonna get the he's gonna get the work out of me. Um, he's gonna get the vision out of me. He's gonna get the purpose out of me because you're too important to God. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be amazing? I mean, just think about it. You know, I I, I always talk about this. Um, there's a book that was out, and um, in the book, this man was saying that he had visited heaven, and he was saying that when you went to heaven, some people had robes on, some people had like these like gowns on, and he didn't understand why some people had robes on, some people had gowns on. And he was saying that you get a robe when you live the life you're supposed to live on earth, basically. You get a gown when you just, these people just came to Christ the last minute, right? So they still have mm-hmm. some work to do. 
And I thought, my God, I don't want to go to heaven and have a robe. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like when I get to heaven, I want my mansion being built. I want my right. house there set up. I want to have a robe when I get there. And it's important for us not to say, I'm just going to live this life any way I want to live. I'm going to live hell out this life and just, get, just make it in heaven. Mm-hmm. We should be wanting to live the glory out of our lives and get to heaven and have a homecoming, a welcoming party. We want, that. We want them to say, thank, well done my good and faithful servant. And that is what you should be striving for on earth. No, you're not going to be perfect, but you're going to die. And you're going to give God your life. And I know people say it's too much and you live in too much. You just holy and you got a super holiness. Nobody got no super holiness. It's a choice to die daily. It's a choice to carry your cross. It's a choice to allow God to do what he needs to do in your life. It's a choice. Sometimes the guy said, I'm going to isolate you sometimes. It's a choice to allow him to pull relationships from me. It's a choice to say, yeah. God, you're more important than anything else. In my life. Somebody said, surrender. It's a choice to surrender. It's yeah. a choice. And it's yeah. a hard choice. And surrendering every day is a choice that you have to make as a Christian. And so my prayer tonight, I'm just going to pray. We're going to close this off. Is that those watching, those may watch later, that you make a choice tonight. To mature, you make a choice tonight that I'm not yeah. going to live a defeated life no more. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I ain't leaving no more defeated life. I'm sick of it. The enemy ain't taking no more things from me. He's not taking no more destiny from me. He's not taking no more purpose from me. He's taking no more children from me. He's not taking none right. of relationship. He's taking nothing he's supposed to have. I ain't let him have nothing. He can't even have no hair out yet. He, he ain't mm-hmm. turning hair gray. He ain't taking me prematurely. I'm not going to die early. Nothing. He's not taking my health. He's not taking nothing. He ain't taking nothing he's supposed to have. I'm determined today that I'm going to live this life to the best of my ability to do what God has called me to do. It may not be a perfect life, but David wasn't perfect either, but he had clean hands and he had a pure heart. And I want you yes. to today that I choose to mature. I yeah. choose to be a mature saint. I choose to allow God to get me off milk and put me on me. I choose to let him check my attitude with the door. I choose to give me self-control yes. and love and peace yes. and peace. Yes. And yes. And yes. I choose to have the fruits of the spirit. I'm choosing God today to, to, to take a, an introspective look at myself and let him change me. So God, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. I just bless, praise, exalt, and magnify your name. We thank you, Lord, because you're truly a good and awesome God. And beside you, there is no other God. Today, God, we just rededicate our lives to you, God. Everyone yes. on this show today, we say today, God, that you are God, and we're going to live the life, God, that you laid out for us. We want today, oh, today, oh, today, God, we make the decision to bless your name, to bless yes, them, to serve you, we make the decision to surrender. We make the decision, God, for you to walk, listen to worship, walk out the life you laid for us, to take instruction of the Holy Spirit, to be one with you, God. We, we give you the right, God, to interfere yes. with our will. We give you the right, God, to interfere with our life. We give you the yes. right, God, to press us, God, and to shake us up, God. Do what you need to do for us to become all we need to become. We'll no longer be saints that sit by the wayside, but we're going to be glorious. We're going to be glory carriers. We're going to walk in peace and walk in joy. And walk, God, we're going to walk in the in divine promises. We're going to walk, yes. God, in breakthrough. We're going to walk, God, in victory. Yes. We're going to walk the wall that you laid out for us as saints. I got to thank yes. you. That we will be those who love our brothers and sisters. We, we, we're going to be those God who will walk in unity. If there's anything in us, God, that's causing a problem or uh, we ask you to take it out, God, and shake yes, it off God. us and burn it by fire. We want to go with you. We don't want to miss you, God, not in this hour, not in this season. So we choose God to say, mature me. Like yes. I ask you to for people. I ask you, God, to just raise them up and be a mighty army for you. I got raise up some fire carrying, glory carrying, hell busting Christians. God, I ask you to do it right uh-huh. now. Those will come to advance the kingdom of God. Raise them up who said, I'm not going to take the enemy. I won't take the devil's gut. I won't take it. Not anymore. Now, one more day, I make a demar- I put a line in the sand, a dem- demarcation line in the sand and say, Here and no further. Today, yeah, I'm going to yeah. do the will of my father. I'm going to be just like Mary. Yeah, so God, to me according to your will. Like I got to do it for us. Woo. Come on, burn every fence. Come on, burn every fence. Every straddle, burn, every every fence straddle, burn it down. Do it right now. Every lukewarm, burn it down. And God, let us be right with you. Now do it for yes, us, God. Yeah. Yes, and we pray. Amen. 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 Woo. All right, y'all. I love you. Love you I hope too. Hope you guys bye. enjoyed this. My prayer is that you guys will do great things for God. If you like to sow a seed, you can in our ministry. It should be on the screen right now. We appreciate every seed that is sown that goes forth in our ministry to help us continue to do what God has called us to do in the, in the ministry. Woo! I, I felt this one today, Mom. 
Yeah. Yes. Yes. My mother, her name is Evangelist Deborah McNair. I call her Prophetess Deborah McNair for coming on uh, tonight with me. As always, I enjoy my mom. She has such a wealth of wisdom. I even enjoyed my husband. My husband was going in the comments, giving his own commentary. Come on here. We was, we was all hitting every side today. I thank you guys so much for coming on and listening. I pray again that it's blessed you. Uh, my prayers that God bless you and keep you in that his face shines upon you, be gracious unto you and give you peace. Thank you guys again for coming on. Um, uh, don't forget that I am starting dream classes, basic one and basic two. I'm starting in August. So if you need more information, go to rainfireministries.org for those classes. You can see them then. Again, it's in August. They start in August. And it's basic one, basic two. You can sign up on rainfireministries.org as well. And I'll see you guys on Thursday for DreamScope. Okay. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Thank you for being with us. We trust you've been greatly blessed by this session. For more info and further training, visit us at www.rainfireministries.org. The Seer Advantage from Tamara McNair Hicks and Rainfire Ministries. Order today 